So I just wanted to give you a preview on a project that we are working on at INFN for a European project called Intertwin, uh, an engine for digital twins. So one of my first videos was on digital twins, not by chance, of course, because we are, were already engaging in this world where there are many, many similarities with other science domains. For that reason, I'm pretty excited to share with you the Interlink project. What Interlink project is? Well, it's an abstraction layer that we think it can be useful to leverage distributed and heterogeneous resources, just like, for example, our world-class HPC centers, where you have a lot of resources that somehow are difficult to access or to, to manage. So an abstraction on top of Kubernetes that will allow you to run in these centers just like you were in any cloud environment. From the other perspective, from the provider of the resources perspective, the idea is to give a common gateway where you can set up all your custom logic for the actual last mile of the provisioning of the resources while keeping the external interface with a Kubernetes cluster standardized by a spec. To do that, we take advantage of Virtual Kubelet project that is actually a very cool project, give you some details during this presentation. Let's dive in into the detail of the implementation and how you can achieve something like this, so spawning a notebook, just like you were on a cloud resources, but definitely on Vega HPC Center, one, a world-class HPC Center of the EOPC. So a world-class HPC. So you will access top-level GPUs, top-level resources, just like submitting a pod to a Kubernetes cluster. Let's see how it goes. So the, the basic idea is that the point of contact of many different activities, starting from people that just have their container and they want to run as it is, or you have complex pipelines, more or less organized, for example, for machine learning specifically with MLflow, or generic pipelines with Daxter, Airflow, or whatever is your engine of choice. The very point of contact of all of them is pod.yaml. So it's the description of executing container with some context. Now, usually these requests went down and digested by a Kubernetes API server that in turn passed this information to a controller. It's really from 10 kilometers far and say, okay, I've got this job to do. A scheduler, can you help me understand who can actually do that? And so usually what happens is that there are a lot of different physical nodes that can execute this payload, this container, in a container runtime. Container runtime that is uh, usually local to the physical node. What virtual kubelet enable, it's a runtime capable of translating this kind of request into something else, into, all right, I, I have to run this payload. I'm going to ask something external to my cluster, to my cloud, to run this container and give me back the results. We decided to take, we decided to take full advantage of this implementation and generalize the layer and generalizing the next layer. So we want something on the remote side that he, we want something on the remote side capable of hiding the complexity of different environments. Like it would be, for example, a batch system and at an HPC center. So we want to put an interface that receive a common specification for my virtual kubelet and then pass this information to what we call an interlink sidecar. The interlink sidecar is a component that works together with the interlink APIs and translate the request from the virtual kubelet into actually a custom logic 
at the provider level. Custom logic means that custom oops. Custom logic means that you can actually take the description of the container and for example the config maps, secrets, empty deer of your pod and translate this into a job run on a Zlurm queue if you are familiar with batch system or whatever batch system you want. So you can decide to implement the logic that you want as far as you respect the interaction with interlink APIs. So as long as you expose the REST API that are expected. So how it works in practice. We have a lot of a, a Kubernetes cluster with nodes, some physical, some are virtual. We are going to schedule now a virtual node to be registered. And in particular, we are going to use Vega HPC Center as a, uh, as a live example. And you see after some time, the node is here and available. All right, then you can see that if we do a describe of this node, essentially what happens is that you see uh, de facto, you see in fact a normal node with all the capacity and the description of a normal node. So you can schedule your pod, job, whatever on, on top of this node, just expliciting some feature that we are going to see that are basically a toleration and a node selector. We have definitely a normal node and here we are going to use this test pod that we are going to, uh, to show in a second. And you can see here, in fact, we specify a node selector, a toleration, and also we put in place a way to pass additional information for the provider. So for example, we might want to use partition of that batch system that has GPUs and require, for example, a GPU for my uh, container. This can happen at annotation layer. We can put in annotation every option we want to pass to the, in this case, uh, container runtime, that is the obtainer container runtime. Then we are going to log in into the nodes. We can skip this part pretty quickly. And once we are into the edge node of the provider, we have to set up this mechanism of interfaces. So the interlink API and the interlink sidecars. There is a utility script to, the, to do that and also to launch the uh, authentication layer on top of the interlink APIs that in this case is a, a node to proxy. So we use tokens from on the virtual kubelet level to the interlink uh, API to authenticate the request. So it's a form of security. Then we spawn the other two binaries are go binaries, de fact, uh, the, uh, in fact, are go binaries, in fact, and and that's all. You can do a start and with some configuration dedicated to the to the site, so indicating your endpoints, for example, and you have now here it is three process running, and you are ready to receive pods from the virtual kubelet. So receiving information on how you want to run containers. In fact, you see that now the virtual kubelet is started pinging the interlink interface. And, and now, and now we can proceed submitting our test pod. You see that a lot now is going to happen. So the interlink received the information and passed that to the sidecar. The sidecar translate this information into a submission of a job. You can see here the job ID and actually on the batch queue, there is a job running for, uh, for my pod. And inside that pod, the container will be executed. Just as matter of fact, how this container will be run is just a, a customizable. How this container will be run is a customizable thing at provider level. So in this case, we will run containers inside a singularity running inside that job. 
You see now the job uh, finished, we are ready to get logs because the logs are now forwarded from the edge node to your kubectl command line. So you are able, you see here, to get actually the logs of something that ran remotely inside an HPC center with an A100 NVIDIA GPU available here and give the logs just like it ran on your cluster on the cloud. You have the next level exploitation for complex resources where probably Kubernetes wasn't an option. So you cannot instantiate Kubernetes, at least in a easy way on these kind of resources. So you see now from this, the whole world of possibilities open. You can integrate any framework that is talking Kubernetes. So uh, that use pods to execute this payload, its pipelines and so on and so forth, specifying toleration and selector and the job is done. I mean, everything will happen under the hood from the user perspective and from also from the framework perspective. The previous example of having a Jupyter lab spawned on a supercomputer in a transparent manner is the perfect example of how extensible and how transparent this kind of access can be. So stay tuned for more information on this kind of technology. So subscribe if you are not subscribed yet and see you on the next video.